Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at how we can use wget as a simple tool uh, to download an entire website slash scrape an entire website. Now uh, for purposes of keeping this video really short and simple, uh, try to outline three examples. Uh, we'll take a look at a basic example, kind of like a hello world if you will. And then we'll take a look at uh, some more advanced functionality. Uh, we'll kind of like go through a very common set of scenarios or parameters that you want to use for screen scraping or downloading files of, off of a website. And then finally, we'll take a look at some more uh, advanced parameters. Now, I do want to clarify that um, uh, when, when we talk about download and scrape, it might have uh, different uh, uh, implications, uh, uh, but uh, keep in mind that uh, this is a very simple example of using wget. Um, I've covered uh, other tools uh, like Scrap IR and even uh, off-the-shelf uh, scraping tools um, in the channel, so you might want to take a look at that for more advanced capabilities, so, but this is probably the simplest way how you can uh, download or keep a, a site off line um, or even scrape some parts of the site. So I, I say scrape with a bit of a hesitation because in most cases when you talk about scrape, uh, you're talking about extracting content from web pages. That's basically uh, uh, crawling the web pages and parsing the web pages and taking content or structured content from the web page um, and storing that in some other structured way or, uh, you know, uh, kind of like extracting uh, information from web pages. Uh, so just want to emphasize that this video is not really uh, an in-depth scraping uh, capability. It's not something you used uh, wget for. Uh, it's more of a case that you want to download the video. I'm sorry, download the web page um, and then um, keep the website content offline or do some further processing locally on your desk or you can build other tools to monitor if websites have changed, etc. Uh, so we are going to exclusively use uh, wget tool. Um, so um, a lot of the parameters um, uh, of uh, wget, if it's unclear or you want to investigate further, you can head over to this URL and all of this is in the description of the video below. Um, to get started, let's uh, start off with a simple example. Um, I've taken a random uh, website. Um, I say random in the sense uh, with a tongue in cheek because uh, I'm pointing into Scrappy, uh, which is uh, one of the tools I've covered in an earlier video. Incidentally, Scrappy is um, uh, is uh, a, a web scraping tool. It's an open source web scraping tool. So it's kind of funny we are using WebGet to scrape uh, or download Scrappy. Anyway, uh, that wasn't the original website I had in mind, but I thought it would be interesting uh, uh, from a video demo standpoint. Anyway, so um, let's actually go and see, oops, uh, what the website looks like. If I can get rid of WebGet there, yeah. All right, so this is uh, basically the content that we are trying to extract uh, in all of these examples. Uh, uh, you might argue that this isn't the best example. There are hardly any images here etc. But uh, again, I wanted a simple site for a demo. Uh, feel free to substitute this URL uh, with your preferred one. Uh, all right, so let's um, let's head over to uh, the console. Let me just, uh, just copy that again. And um, on our console, I'm gonna just, uh, I've created a folder which currently does not contain anything. And let's just paste that there, web get. Um, uh, oh. Uh, would be helpful if I enable. All right, so connection established. Um, let's try that again. All right, so what you saw was um, the the web get in action, but uh, it didn't do anything amazing. It's just uh, downloaded a simple HTML file, which if you open, obviously. Um, opens up on the browser here, and you can see that it's pointing to a local resource. Now, keep in mind that not all the contents of this page uh, are extracted um, and pulled um, down to your computer. So for example, CSS files, uh, JPEG images, etc. these aren't downloaded, which actually brings us uh, to the next example. Um, so this was, um, you know, just a very simple example. If you've never used uh, WebGet for HTML, chances are you've used WebGet in the past to download zip files and other software installation files. But um, interesting to think of it as a tool to download uh, web pages. 
now things get more interesting uh, in example two. Um, here we are going to use a few parameters here. So the first thing we'll want to do, you'll notice that I'm pointing into the same folder. So uh, I'm sorry, the same URI. Uh, what I've specified here is that it needs to recursively um, uh, navigate the contents of uh, this initial page and then start recursively tra uh, traversing through the site more like a, what a web crawler would do. Um, this is um, uh, not a mandatory option but uh, the no clobber basically implies that if um, if a page, um, if a URL had already been crawled and if a page was created, don't crawl and recreate that page. So it's typically helpful when you have uh, uh, issues with connectivity or you want to stop and restart a couple of times or typically during development uh, or testing. Um, this is where things get more interesting. So we have the page uh, requisites. So remember I talked about in this particular case uh, when we uh, extracted it the first time, it was just the HTML, but uh, it did not download or keep an offline copy of any of the other resources uh, like images and CSS, etc. Uh, so uh, setting this will ensure that all the other resources are also downloaded. Um, HTML extension base is helpful when you're navigating, uh, when you're crawling um, or scraping and downloading files which uh, typically have an extension like uh, JSP or ASPX or uh, CGI scripts uh, which uh, when you want to store on your local file and when you uh, hard disk and when you want to click on it, you want the extension to be an HTML extension so that it automatically opens uh, in the browser. Uh, so that's the only reason for this. Um, convert links basically ensures that any links, uh, HTML, Anchor, or various others, uh, link to a local file path as opposed to pointing it back to um, the server's um, URIs. Um, that's basically what a convert link is. And finally, we have um, uh, uh, some um, escaping of uh, characters. And finally, um, this what you're seeing is uh, we are specifying that it needs to only um, uh, stay within the uh, domain or the subdomain. And finally, uh, no parent specifies that um, uh, it needs to be at this hierarchy level and it will ensure that it does not go up a hierarchy, uh, uh, say for example, into French or German language. Uh, so let's run this example now. All right, so um, if we run that example, um, let me just uh, cancel that and clear that folder just so that it stays clean and we know what's going on. All right, so that's uh, now you can see that it's uh, completely scraped, um, uh, downloaded uh, all these pages. Um, and if we go down here, um, you'll notice we have the index.html page. So let me close the old one. And now this is our uh, latest downloaded page. Uh, now, just be mindful that um, while this um, selection of mine might not, uh, it's actually a poor choice of a website that I've used for this video because uh, this page does still rely on external um, uh, CSS files and various external resources. And since we have uh, locked it down to only um, the scrappy org domain, it's not going to download those uh, resources locally. Uh, uh, additionally, you'll find that if you try to copy uh, it from the same site or follow the same example, you'll notice some of the images haven't been downloaded because uh, this uh, is an example of an image that's um, um, in a different uh, uh, domain. Uh, so we have um, restricted it uh, to only be in scrappy.org domain, whereas this is trying to point to read the docs.org um, domain. So again, uh, it depends on your particular mileage of uh, how much you want to scrape, but I'm um, just highlighting that based on the um, parameters you provided here, it may or may not scrape the content uh, uh, to the fullest degree and keep everything offline. Uh, but obviously you can uh, kind of like tweak these parameters uh, to your heart's content. Now, um, just a quick temp check. Uh, given where we are right now, um, what we have done is we have uh, downloaded the files. Um, it's, uh, it's all there in our local hard disk. Uh, and that's uh, brilliant. Uh, it uh, kind of allows for us to do offline browsing slash uh, do further processing offline. 
uh, but uh, in most cases you are um, you are trying to download or scrape a much larger site uh, typically these parameters alone uh, it will not suffice so in which case uh, that's uh, typically where I use um, uh, the third example here um, now this uh, has some additional parameters here um, so in uh, in most cases you will definitely want to um, uh, keep these parameters uh, so um, in in the previous examples you uh, you noticed that um, the requests were being sent immediately one after the other and uh, this is okay for uh, small sites um, or if you are scraping only a small subset but when you're scraping larger sites uh, they might blacklist your IP uh, so one of the ways um, you can get around that or just be a good uh, uh, netizen if you will is uh, to allow for a wait so it waits for five seconds before it um, um, it sends the next request um, I also you can specify a, a rate limit uh, so how much of data you're downloading um, so by default it's bytes so you can specify the K or I believe you can also specify the M uh, as a megabytes parameter so uh, again it ensures that your sites um, don't get blacklisted um, and some sites um, are a little more intelligent it uh, it checks that um, uh, the user agent is not in a familiar list uh, so it might uh, not serve you content so there are ways that you can specify the user agent and then finally um, there are ways that um, uh, the default keep in mind recursive uh, again you can check the docs uh, for more up-to-date information but um, you'll find that uh, the default recursion I believe is only five levels deep um, but if you did want to um, uh, recurse down um, to lower levels or restrict it to something less like maybe two for example you can uh, set the level here and uh, the last thing I'll uh, point out is uh, in most cases when I'm um, downloading a larger website I typically would want to run it in the background but at the same point in time have a, a, a log file uh, where I can send that data to so um, uh, wget provides some inbuilt functionality so we can send the output or see what the process or progress is uh, in kind of like a log file and uh, we will uh, run it in the background uh, so let's uh, take a look at that in action and um, just before I do that let me just um, uh, split this into uh, two sections here so that we can see the files so um, let's run that here all right so um, that's running in the background if uh, if you take a look you'll notice that uh, yep it's uh, it's the process is still running in the background and uh, we have sent the data uh, to this uh, file here so if I look at the contents you'll notice yeah we have a new file here so let's tail that activity uh, so here we can see uh, the log is being updated as and when uh, new requests and uh, progress is made um, um, via webget it's sending the results to the log file so I can just um, you know close all this uh, uh, consoles and maybe come back in a couple of hours or uh, maybe even much longer if uh, it, it does take that long um, and then um, I'll see what the progress is. Uh, so that's uh, quite handy. Uh, I would say in the vast majority of the cases, uh, this is a kind of like template that I would use. Um, uh, one final note before we wrap up for this video is um, again uh, you'll want to do, uh, run it on different sites and see how it performs but uh, some sites uh, do uh, do know uh, that uh, uh, there's a bot or um, you know an automated process that's uh, uh, working or re making these requests so instead of having a fixed uh, five second wait you can uh, remove this weight and instead uh, put this which is a random weight which um, works on some sites again it's a uh, it, this as a tool it's a uh, quick and dirty in a manner of speaking and um, it's not as versatile as a full-fledged um, web scraping tool obviously um, again I've covered these in other videos in the past uh, some other examples of web scraping tools but um, just uh, something I found quite handy uh, when I wanted to scrape off some uh, some content really quickly uh, and keep it either offline or do some post processing and content extraction alright so that's it for this quick video uh, thanks everyone for watching